This video presentation explains the breed plan calving these EBVs, both how to interpret the EBVs and also what information is used to calculate them. As you can see on the slide, there are two different calving ease EBVs calculated by breed plan, a calving ease direct EBV and also a calving ease daughter's EBV. The calving ease direct EBV, in the case of a sire or a bull, estimates the genetic differences in the ability of that bull's calves to be born unassisted when he's joined to heifers who are planned to calve at two years of age. In the case of females, it provides an estimate of genetic differences in the ability of that female or heifer to calve unassisted herself at two years of age. The calving ease direct EBVs are expressed as differences in the percentage of unassisted calvings. And in this manner, the higher, more positive calving ease direct EBVs indicate more ease of calving. So therefore, if looking to select an animal, either a sire for use over heifers, or a heifer herself to calve down at two years of age, where calving ease is something of importance within the breeding objective, higher calving ease direct EBVs would generally be more beneficial. The calving ease daughter's EBV, on the other hand, estimates the genetic differences in the ability of an animal's, either a sire or a dam, in the ability of their daughters to calve themselves unassisted at two years of age. The calving ease daughter's EBV is expressed in a similar manner in the percentage of unassisted calvings. And so if we were looking to select an animal for use within a breeding program where the ease of calving in his, in his or her daughters is of um, importance, then higher, more positive calving ease daughters EBVs would be more beneficial. So we have two different EBVs, a calving ease direct or a calving ease daughters, both relating to different traits and both EBVs reflecting to traits which act or, or operate fairly independently of one another. The calving ease EBVs, both calving ease direct and calving ease daughters, are calculated based on three different sets of information. The primary piece of information used in, to calculate these EBVs are calving difficulty scores. Calving difficulty scores should be collected by stud breeders each time that a calving occurred with the level of calving difficulty scored on the 1 to 6 scale, with 1 being a score of unassisted, 2 easy pull, 3 hard pull, 4 surgical assistance, 5 malpresentation and 6 elective surgical. The interpretation of these would be as follows, where easy pull would indicate that some assistance was given but it was of non-mechanical in nature, a hard pull or a score of three indicating that assistance was required and mechanical assistance um, was used, four indicating surgical or veterinary assistance was required, five being malpresentation such as breech births and six being elective surgical where caesarean was, was um, utilised not due to carbon difficulty, but just because it was an elective caesarean was conducted. In association with carving difficulty scores, two other pieces of information also go into the calculation of the carving ease EBVs, being birth weights, which is just the weight of calves short at birth or shortly afterwards, and gestation length information, which is generated at the moment from the submission of AI dates. So the three different pieces of information, calving differently scores, birth weights and gestation length information, all go into the calculation of the calving ease EBVs. And all three pieces of information should be submitted by stud producers in association with their calf registrations. When recording this information, there are a number of considerations that stud producers should make to ensure that they receive the best possible calving ease EBVs on their animals. Firstly, it's very important that information be recorded on all calves that are born, especially in the case of recording information on the dead calves. While those calves may not be of interest to us for use within our breeding program, the information on dead calves, normally the extremes in birth weights, um, provide very valuable information for their sires, their dams, and also for the other calves which we're still interested in. Likewise, if a birth is not observed, so you don't actually see the cow calve in the paddock, but when you go into the paddock and there's a perfectly live, healthy calf and no sign of calving differently, then we would score that animal with the calving differently score of one, born unassisted. So a common misconception is that people actually have to observe the cow calving to score a calving differently score. That's certainly not the case. Of importance is that we need some variation between animals in calving differently scores from them to be used effectively by a breed plan. 
So if all animals are carb unassisted or are scored with a carbon duplicity score of 1, it won't result in them receiving high carbonese EBVs, but rather we haven't identified any differences between animals for carbon duplicity, and so the information does not contribute effective information to the calculation of the carbonese EBVs. In these situations where all the carbon duplicity scores are 1, the carving as EBVs would be calculated entirely off the birth weight and gestation length information that may be available. Breeders also have the ability to collect what we call birth management groups. So in cases where females have been managed differently up until birth, where it will have an effect on their carving differently, so um, effect on management so that their birth weights may be heavier than other cows, Breeders have the option of submitting what we call birth management groups to identify and correctly group those animals that should be validly compared with one another. Obviously when collecting birth information and particularly birth weight information, uh, it's very important to take care and be aware of protective mothers. Um, it is a trait which is very difficult to uh, record and also particularly when people have staff recording it, then there are some operational health and safety requirements that you need to be aware of and develop a system which is going to work for you. The last consideration is when recording this birth information is to do it properly or don't do it at all. So there are a range of different uh, shortcuts that might be available to people to collect particularly birth weight information such as girth tapes or hoof circumference tapes. The requirements of breed plan at the moment would be to collect this information using uh, weigh equipment and do a good job of it and you will therefore receive very reliable carving as EBVs. So hopefully this gives you a good insight into the carving as EBVs and what information is used to calculate them. Further information is available from the breed plan website, particularly the technical area of the website where there's a range of tip sheets available uh, that provides further information. Or alternatively, you can contact staff at the breed plan office on the number listed on the screen for further information.